are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. After last night, especially, yeah. Um, everyone watching will have no effing idea who you are, so we should just start with that. All right, cool. I'm Cameron. I'm from uh, Funko's marketing department. I lead our social team. Uh, and the social team consists of you and one person? Uh, me and a team of five others, and it's oh. our podcast, our social channels, video content, email marketing, all sorts of things, yeah. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. you have a real department. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. at Collider, we have, like, I was going to make a joke, but, like, yeah, you have a real department. Hey, when I started, it was me and one other person, so I feel you. <laughs> right, no, no, we're yeah. building, we're building, we're yeah. building. So I want to jump in right off the bat. I went to your Funko Friday Fun day, what's it called? Funko Fun Days, yeah. Every fr but it is every Friday of SDCC. Right, yeah. so how long... Okay, I've never experienced a party like this in my life, so I want to give a huge thank you to the people that invited me. I don't want yeah. to name drop to get them in <laughs> trouble, but um, I've never experienced anything like this. It was pandemonium and crazy and more mm -hmm. energy. It was like being in Hall H, but like a thousand people. Yeah. It was insane. So the thing I learned was that I guess the event sells out in like 10 seconds. Yeah, so we, we will hype it up and say, you know, in a week we'll release tickets and then people just camp out and wait for a time. And, you know, it's... it's wait, wait. So yeah. where do people get tickets? They will get it. So we will release them on our on Eventbrite. We go through Eventbrite. Got it. Um, so we'll say like you know this you know Wednesday at ten o'clock they're gonna go. Just make sure you, you're you know aware when they go. They go in like two seconds, and then we have a, a wait list. I think Brian said of like thirty thousand people. So, yeah, it's, it's insane. It's so fun. <laughs> right now, isn't like have you guys? And this is really getting into the weeds. But like one of the things that I found is that there's a lot of like bots yeah. and a lot of programs that can mm -hmm. help you basically cut lines yeah how do you fight that when you have such a demand well we set a password so you actually have to wait for us to post the password to then get in to then have the ability to buy two tickets so that slows people down and authenticates that they're real okay so that password is basically everything yes right <laughs> and we don't actually know the password until about 10 seconds before we decide it and then we post it got it so basically yeah. you decide on the password then you enter it in the system and, or then, someone... and then we say go God, okay, yeah. so there's really, there's not really a way to cheat it. As far as we know. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Because then we also go through the process of going name by name of who did get a ticket to make sure there are, I mean, there are a lot of re returning customers, a lot of people that we know. I mean, it's very community oriented, people that we see at conventions throughout the year. It's tedious, but it's worth it. Uh, completely. So if I'm not mistaken, it's like 1,600 people? It's about that, yeah. And each year we add a couple a couple hundred more. Um, and it's funny to think it started about 20 years ago with a, I don't know, a couple dozen people. And it was a, I think it was like a serial themed uh, science fun days. It was like very low key, but it was for the hardcore fans. So we, we try to hi highlight that every year. Yeah, um, the thing that I learned last night was there's a lot of, this is what I learned, again, because mm -hmm. I went. They give you, you get a lot of cool stuff yes there's like a poster tube filled with some very limited figures yes then they all through the night they do these like drops where they play this crazy song that is <laughs> addictive as hell uh like i forget the party what's the it? prize patrol prize patrol yeah. <laughs> and then they just do these mystery drops where you get like a limited pop yeah but i thought the coolest thing was everyone who goes gets to get a prototype yes and that that was something that we did this year as a new thing in oh that's the, a new in in uh, the past few years it's gone through a uh, kind of a uh, a shift there was a point in time where we were just throwing them off stage oh, it, Lord. yeah so we were like we'll put them in you know black plastic bags so you don't know what they are and then people will be it, it was not okay so we, we were like let's regulate this let's have people come in get their drink tickets go to a photo op get their proto sit down <laughs> like you know like actually enjoy themselves and so it is we found a way to actually get those exclusives to people in a safe way and in a way where it's randomized completely because um i yeah there was like a machine not a machine, but there's people behind it. Yeah. But like you stick a coin in, <laughs> mm -hmm. like a chip, mm -hmm. and then they hand you a, a black a mystery bag. Proto. It could be anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was interesting. I didn't realize that's not how it's been. Yeah, we, it's it. I mean, Fun Days as a whole is kind of a living, breathing thing, and it's run entirely by Mike Becker, the founder of Funko, um, and he he really brings it to life. Um, and he's thinking a lot about the fan experience and what he wants people to take away from it. Um, so also, you had Mark Hamill there last night. Oh my God! Yes, that was amazing. Right. Uh, that was my awesome. my thing is the thing that I found interesting was there was like uh, I mean it's really random who gets some of these limited ones, but he yes. picked like two numbers, mm -hmm. and those people got a limited Funko that was like eighty made. Yes. Which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, we tried that for the first time last year. We had a uh, an eighties prom themed fun days, and so we tied in Stranger Things. We actually had hopper from stranger things come out and he did the same thing and picked two tables and they got gold hopper pops so it's a cool new tradition 
Right. The thing that I have found, and I'm not an expert at this, and I don't want to pretend that I am, <laughs> but they're very collectible. Yeah. So sort of as a company, how do you sort of deal with that in mm -hmm. the whole collectability aspect and making sure that, you know what I mean, like fans yeah. get them? Like, yeah. Or, or is it sort of like you're just blessed with that people really want them and there's only so much you can do? Well, I think a way to combat that is you saw the the boxes of fun with the, the Freddies and the Freddy Funko Pops in them. Um, we actually last year also started to make variants that we sold online. So at the same time as the show starting, we dropped uh, a box of fun that you could buy online. So we're helping people. It's kind of like a shared exclusive that uh, we'll do with a retailer and at a convention. So um, we're trying new things all the time. But but to your point, I mean, it is highly collectible for a reason. We, re we, we respect that, but that's why we kind of go for the shared exclusives. Completely. Well, yeah. I, I noticed on one of the ones that um, I got was like limited to, I want to say 350 or 500. It yeah. was some very low number. Yeah. Is that... Um, how often do you guys do that where it's like really low numbers? Is it just at Comic-Con? Typically, yeah. It's usually Comic-Con. Sometimes on our Funko shop, um, we'll do sh uh, release each week, and sometimes it's around 500 to 1,000. But um, typically, yeah, it's usually Comic-Con and especially SDCC. Yeah, um, it, there definitely seemed to be – it was crazy. Yeah. It really was crazy last night, and the energy and what – you know. and I did get the sense of community yeah. in the room, and everyone seemed to know each other. Totally. So, you know, it's like – it was it was it was a really interesting, crazy experience that I am very lucky to have been a part of, and I hope the other. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming, and and thank you for for sharing it uh, in that way, because I think people see there's exclusive things. It's really cool to go, but really the community is why we're doing it. Right. Um. Also, you guys were really cool. I did that Russo Brothers panel. Yes. You guys made these pins that mm -hmm. say I'm a fan of the Russo Brothers mm -hmm. that you could get in the room. So a big thank you to that. Yeah. Um, I know that was a big push for you guys this year is pins. Yes. Where'd that whole thing come from? Well, so we decided uh, to do something special for SDCC's 50th year by doing 50 exclusive pins you can only get at the show um, throughout the whole convention to highlight our licensing and retail partners and at panels that tie into Funko as well. Um, so that, that was kind of a special thing that came in last minute. But um, thank you for you know allowing us to do the Russo Brothers p button. I think that was a really special way for us to commemorate something that uh, was, I would say, the culture moment of the year so far so you know that was really cool um, you should also see I don't know if you saw it if you were in the room or not but they their team animated the button I heard I, I all I saw was the button on the the giant Hall H screen and I was like wow yeah no they animated the button and they wink and yeah. blink I, I'm gonna remind me after this and I yeah. will uh, try to get you guys the file or oh something. I would love to see because, it because yeah. uh, I when I saw it I was like oh, that that's great um, <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about the pin yes. yes that's on your left so, so what exactly is this? So if you went to uh, Fun Days yesterday, it was freaky tiki themed. So it was all, you know, floral shirts, lays, all sorts of stuff like that. The story of the show was uh, the explorer, Sir Marco Beckenworth III. We can do, we can do yeah, we'll just right put it right here. The, yeah. um, he was on the, on this quest for the Golden Freddy Idol, which was the big giveaway at the end of the show. So everybody in the room got the pop version, but we made a pop pin version that we're, we're launching to start off our pop pin series which is coming later this year so it's actually coming in a pop sized box it's the size of a pop um, it's got a detachable stand on the back so you can actually display it out of box you can take the stand off and wear it um, and we've got more coming later this year uh, so you could get this wait so is is this uh, limited or this is limited you can get it um, through our social media channels we're giving it away we're giving it away at the uh, throughout the convention today and Got tomorrow it. um, so it's a special commemorative event um, we couldn't actually do anything before uh, before fun days because it, it gives away the whole final giveaway um, if we did it on Friday or before but uh, yeah it's we got this uh, this great uh, Freaky Tiki uh, Golden Freddy Idol pop pin. Let's jump into the strategy game. Yeah. I feel like I'm pimping out your products. But no, I'm no, fine. that's the hey. Let's, no, let's no do problem. It. I'm curious. So what this is? How often is this the first strategy game? So yeah, we we acquired a. a, a a board game company earlier this year, Forrest Prezan, and uh, we're we're working with them um, to create Funkoverse, the strategy game. It's for players who just want to play with a couple of their friends. It's for longtime strategy players. Um, you know, it's it's we have uh, Harry Potter, we have Rick and Morty, Golden Girls, uh, Batman. They're all coming out at the same time. You, they're expansion packs and booster packs, so you can actually play with this. If you get another one, you can actually combine the two, and the characters can interact. So you could. I got to yes. pause you right there. Yes, please. So there's booster packs yes are they 
packs the way like Wizard Collectibles makes limited cards, or it's not really like that. It's not limited. We're not really focusing on limited limited uh, edition right now. We're just trying to to get players to get into the game, but they are playable on their own. So you don't need this and an expansion to play the game. You could just get the expansion and play that on its own. Got it. Um, so, so the figures that are in there. Yes, they're actually smaller than a, a regular pop. So it's a new yeah. scale for us, um, and we're going to be uh, we're going to be at Gen Con next. In a couple weeks, um, we'll be launching Funkoverse there. There will be some for sale. We'll have a couple of other surprises as well, and we'll just be uh, demoing the game for a bunch of folks. So the figures that are in there are, it's like a wide release. There's no limited nature. It's not like they're limited to 5,000 of the, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, they, these are going to be um, widely available. There, I, there may be exclusives down the line. There may not be. We're still trying to determine, but right you gotta, now. got to get the game to take off. We want people to play. Yeah, exactly. You know, we want it to be fun. And it, what's cool is they actually have accessories that they can drop and other players can pick up. So if you ever wanted to see, you know, Blanche from Golden Girls with a battering, this is the way you can do it. Uh, I also noticed that uh, at your booth this year, which is way bigger than you've done in the past. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have like 70 exclusives. Yeah. I want to say that's, I, I could be wrong about this. No, it's it's up there. Um, I How do you keep on, it's crazy how many pops you guys have made. <laughs> yeah. Is it, have you guys reached a point where it's actually like a struggle to find interesting ones that you like really want to make it's you know it's interesting because we're reflecting pop culture we like to talk about being fast fashion pop culture collectibles so um we do pay homage to the long-standing collectibles we also have an sdcc and funko booth and for the first time um we're <laughs> sdcc licensed out their toucan mascot so we made that as a pop we made that as a pop pez um we've got pop figures coming for you know we have the the sith trooper that for star wars we've, we've got brick and morty that aligned with their announcement of the characters during SDCC. So really, I mean, we, we won't run out as long as pop culture remains fun, you know? Completely. Yeah. I know that there's a few that are only at the booth, mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of retail partner exclusives. Right. How does that work? So the ones that are at the booth that are retail partner exclusives, is it like a variant at your booth? Or how does that whole thing work? So if it's a shared exclusive, it will be at our booth and the shared retailer, whether it's online or in-store. The difference is the ones in the convention center have the same sticker. The ones that are at the shared retail uh, online or store have a different one. It says convention exclusive. So that, that's really it. So I mean, it's the same it's, figure, it's different packaging. A yeah, literally a sticker. Now, how many do you have a ton of fans that, because I spoke to somebody who works at your booth that I know, yeah. And he was telling me that there are people who come up and literally buy one of everything. Yes. Oh, yeah. If you, because there's a lottery to just get into the booth to then buy. So it's uh, and that's I mean, that's new as well. I mean, we're, we're always playing around with the process. But, yeah, as soon as people can get in, they just buy one of everything. How do you carry 70 pops away <laughs> from that booth? Well, we have enormous blue bags. So uh, it, but even how many can one bl bag hold? Um, I did one earlier and I think it was about, well, there, it varies because we have six inch pops and other sure. things as well, but you, you can basically get all of those exclusives in two of those bags. Shut up. Yeah. 70. 70. They're wow. huge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I did not think that was possible. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give a, uh, I'm, 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 I'm stumped. <laughs> well, the, the bag is actually probably the most valuable exclusive in the booth. Honestly, it's amazing. The it can, yeah, it's, it's underrated. I'll say. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's also, I think, a few that are limited just to the booth. Yes. The, so we, I think we have two this year, and it is the um, Otter Pops pop figure. We're launching the rest of them later this year, but we have the Louis Blue Raspberry Otter Pop, and then we also have the Winona Earp Pop. And on something like those, yeah. how do you release the numbers? Are we do. Yeah, on that, and it's also printed on the sticker. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how many did you make? Of those two? Yeah. A thousand each. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's... Okay, got it. So it's similar to like what goes on at the Funko party, right? Where it's like pretty limited, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. And and we do a lot uh, stock for each day, so we aren't running out on the first day or anything like that. Completely. Yep. I actually want to get back to the prototype thing. Let's I do thought it. That, yeah. like, I have I have some friends that have some prototypes. I actually have some Star Wars prototypes. Oh, I, I love very those. nice. I love those things because they're obviously very unique. Mm -hmm. So you have a thousand or fifteen hundred people that attend the event last night, right? Like, are people getting double, like, typically at Funko, yeah. how many prototypes do you make Ooh. of one of those pops? So that's a really great question. It varies depending on the type of figure. And uh, we there's actually two types of prototypes you can get to. There's the all white, and then there's the one that has color call outs for different pieces sure. in the pop design. So um, it varies in number. Typically, there's at least one 
color version and one white version for each one. So um, it's possible that there were two of the same proto there, but they wouldn't have been the same color. Right, okay, so you're saying on a manufacturing level, you mm -hmm. think there's really only one of each color. There, There is at least that. There right. could be more, but there, there's usually not more than one or two of each. Really? Because yeah. I know that with a lot of toy manufacturers, what happens is that they will, I mean, they could create four to ten of yeah. a prototype, and then what's interesting is a lot of toy manufacturers say this is... The, the thing that you're making. Right. They will create this with like a different colored box, like a different color cardboard mm -hmm. to just see what it looks like as a mock-up. Yeah. Do you get a lot of that or it's pretty much the mock-up of the box doesn't really exist? The packaging is different and I think it's easier for us to manufacture. It's more of just like, it, we get so far down the line before it even gets molded that it's, you know, they sketch out the design, they actually render it in 3D sculpting, and then that has to be checked off before we, we can even make it. So by the time we're manufacturing it, pretty much everything's signed off. Got it. So yeah. so basically, the okay, I now understand why people went crazy for the prototypes. Yeah. Because there's really, there's like, you're saying to me there's really not like 10 of each. No. Like, it, for, I mean, there in the history of pop figures, there are some that might have around that, but it's unusual. Yeah. Got it. Um, yeah, you're I, asking a lot of really good questions about prototypes. I mean, we, we get questions like, how can I get one? How valuable are they? But really, the process is, you know, it's it's just a production sample. And, oh, it's, I, it, I understand. and what's what's so interesting is our artists is, artists are like, well, but we made the, the final product. Don't you want that? And they're like, yeah, but I mean, this is kind of cool, too. Well, I think, listen, one of the things that I think you've already touched on and mm -hmm. what we've talked about is uh, you make a lot of limited figures. Right. And these are like the as limited. I mean, this is the extreme limited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is like next level. Yeah. You know, definitely. Um, I don't know the first thing about uh, I don't want to open that door, but <laughs> I, I was going to say, I think it's actually I think it's really cool yeah. that the company gives out those prototypes mm -hmm. because I, I think it's actually just really, really cool. A lot of a lot of toy companies won't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, and, and that's the focus on the community, too, because a lot of fun days essentially started because of the, the community around Funko. And I think when Mike and when Brian are thinking about ways to give back, it's those are the those are the fans that are just rabid for Funko information, anything to do with it. Like people will ask to buy our staff shirts after the show because it's a collectible. So, I mean, if they're they get a piece of the production that went into an actual pop figure, I mean, they, they go crazy. No, yeah. I, I completely <laughs> it's get It's really it. special. They At the end of the show, Brian went through a whole slide thing. Brian, your yeah. CEO, yeah, yeah. showing off all this upcoming stuff. He sure did. <laughs> what is What are you most excited about as a company in terms of maybe some of the pops that are coming up or some of the cool shit that you guys are doing? That yeah. You, I'm sorry for the language. No. <laughs> that you guys are getting ready to push out besides what's on the table. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're really excited about bringing our own IP out to market. So we have Wetmore Forest, which is a... Uh, uh, new, it's new in that we have more of a focus on it with children's books, t-shirts, um, figures, plush. That's setting at Barnes and Noble, and we have a big push for that later this year. I'm sure you saw um, some of the Pop Town stuff. So um, we're really starting to do more with our own IP, and also bringing in uh, a nice mixture of you know what people are kind of expecting, you know the episode nines of the world, sure. but then also the other things that maybe you're not totally expecting at the same time. So I I, I really like the product mix and, and the licensing that we're working on right now have you guys talked about and i could be completely wrong but have you guys do you guys do t-shirts or posters or is that stuff that has been done yeah we do apparel we have pop tees um we've been doing that for a couple of years and we is it like limited stuff or is it's it not usually limited sometimes they are and they'll be bundled with a figure or a pez or something like that but it's typically just uh, boxed in its own um, packaging that resembles a pop box sure um what's the biggest pop with vehicle or animal or whatever that you huh. guys have made and what is is there anything coming up that you know in the back of your brain that's like oh fans are gonna this is massive well i do know that we're gonna have more of a focus on ad icons which our fans seem to just absolutely love so um you know all the cereal mascots things like that they it, i mean toucan sam people love that so we have more ad icons coming out um and then in terms of of big uh, for like pop rides and vehicles and things like that um i i Clear. I honestly don't know. I mean, a lot of our product announcement is up in the air until maybe a day or two before, um, before, and then that's when marketing really pushes it out. Got yeah. it. Um, I think I'm going to stop there and just say uh, thank you so much for coming yeah. by. And uh, I really did learn a lot about Funko last night, Good. way more than I ever knew. <laughs> so um, I mean it sincerely. Thank you uh, for having me. And um, hopefully in the future, uh, Collider and Funko will do something 
Interesting. Let's do it. That would be awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm dropping the because it's going to happen. To be continued. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.